Swedish Midsummer. This might be the most Scandinavian thing ever. And if you ask someone from outside Scandinavia to mention something that is very typical of Northern thing, Midsummer and Midsummer's Eve are usually mentioned. Both in Norway, Sweden, Finland and Denmark will celebrate this and in some areas of Estonia too. The celebrations is a bit different depending on where you are. The Danish and Norwegian people call it Sankt Hans often and they together with the Finns seem to be more focused on the big bonfires. While in Sweden and the more Swedish speaking areas of Finland we are more focused on dance and to do games around the midsummer pole and wearing beautiful flower wreath 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 that word I can't pronounce, flower garlands in our hair. Even midsummers when it is raining, we still do our best to keep the spirit up. This is, after all, one of the most important and popular holidays during the year. A little rain won't keep us away from drinking, singing and eating a lot of good food, usually seal and a lot of salmon. And someone always gets stuck scrubbing the potatoes. Speaking of salmon, by the way, before we go on with the history of Midsummer Eve, let me just mention that I have a Patreon page and a Ko-fi page where you can give me a coin or two if you want to support this channel. Especially if you want my orange cat Skorpan to have his favorite salmon sticks to chew on while I am making the content. It makes him less an annoyed kitten. So now, let's go back to Midsummer, Seal and Alcohol. Earlier in the history, Midsummer was celebrated at the 23rd of June, very close to the summer solstice that happens the 22nd. But later on, during the 1950s, they changed that to be the first Friday closest to the 23rd. That way, the big companies didn't have to give us Swedes an extra day off and didn't have to have as much people call in sick the day after because they was hungover like hell. Yeah, we Swedes are a very respectable and controlled people, just like the Canadians. But when it's time to celebrate, all bets are off and we go all in with the booze. This also makes this tradition, as many others during the year, a time when people are trying very hard to talk about how seriously awful it is with this drinking habit. For a long time, it was also a common fact that the bright summer nights of midsummer was nine months before the time most babies were born in Sweden. That and Christmas. This is not the case anymore, and one can only guess why. My guess is that the shagging during midsummer might not have gone down, but today we might actually have better sex education and also better protection and free birth control pills. Midsummer is a big holiday in Sweden, and probably the most common thing to joke about in videos that describe Sweden. It is also said that this is the most hidden thing to ever exist out of all our strange things that we do up here. Well, I, that up until now, haven't read too much about this tradition myself, just been very Swedish and gone by the how is more important than the why, I have thought so too. Finally, I thought, I can please people and say this has nothing to do with the Christian church. This is something that is older than time and that we still do up here. Well, <laughs> my first Google search ended me up at the Nordic Museums article. And I had not read many words until I entered this. Midsommarfirandet var ursprungligen en kyrkohögtid ägnad åt Johannes Döparen, vars kalenderdag infaller den 24 juni. A rough translation of that is Midsommar was originally a Christian celebration for John the Baptist, whose day in the calendar is the 24th of June. You know how I always rant about we have been Christian for a thousand year and most of our tradition is a mix of all kinds of things and usually stolen from Germany? Well, seems like that's the case here too. <laughs> Uh, according to the Nordic Museum article, there is no clear connection between midsummer celebration and any pre-Christian traditions. There is not much evidence at all that we raised any maypoles during the pre-Christian time. They also claim in that article that the earliest mention of this tradition is mentioned by Olaus Magnus during the 16th century. During the eve of John the Baptist Day, People of all sex and age gather at a town square or out in the fields to happy and merry engage in dancing to the light of a vast number of fires that is lit. This made me upset. 
So the thing that I thought was actually ancient and one of our actually oldest traditions are still not old and pre-Christian. Have I been fooled all my life? So I dug a little deeper than just one article. I searched in other books and articles and found that this was not something all agreed around. Jan Eivind Svan writes in an article that this celebration is old and that it is unclear how old. Maybe ancient, maybe not. Another article written on a page from the Institute of Folk Memories and Language also agrees with Jan Eivind Svan's more open approach. Yes, this has been connected to the day of the John the Baptist, which you clearly can see in Norway and Denmark, where the holiday is still called Sankt Hans Aften, Hans being a Nordic name for John the Baptist. John the Baptist was supposed to be born six months before Jesus, and that lands him somewhere in the midst of summer. And this day is still celebrated in other parts of the Christian world, especially Europe, and they have still lit bonfires. That is probably because of the solstice. Regardless of it, if it is during summer, autumn, winter or spring, Solstice has always, in most cultures, been associated with nights that were dangerous. These are the nights where you have the longest day, the longest night, or when the day and nights are exactly the same. This means that the forces of evil, the magic and the folklore beings are as strongest during these nights. Fire seemed to have been a good way to scare this off. So we are again left with very different ideas about how old this tradition is and we can see that it is, just as most of our traditions, a mix of all kinds of Indo-European traditions mixed with what might be pre-Christian Iron Age for Scandinavia and what might be just things that came to be because our farmers was living a hard life and started to come up with all kinds of ideas about how to protect themselves against the forces of nature. Nights connected to magic and strong forces was, of course, the nights when rituals like this were supposed to work best. We see this mix of old, new and a bit of we don't know, clearly in the Midsummer Pole, or what sometimes is called the May Pole. Today this pole is the modern symbol of our Midsummer celebration and what people from outside Scandinavia might recognize the most. The dancing around it is considered an old tradition, and it probably has been. But the most famous song, Små Grodorna, aka Little Frogs, wasn't actually created as a Swedish dancing game until 1922, when it was for the first time shown in a book for children's songs for dancing. The song Små Grodorna, Little Frogs, are actually a French marching song that the English made a new text to, to mock the French, of course. Frog was a common slur for the French people by the English back then. If the Swede that translated the English song knew what they were doing, that is not really clear. But now this is a very common children's dance song up here in Sweden. Don't tell the French people. I think this might be very upsetting for them. This song is, of course, not the only song we dance to. As with all feasts around the year, dancing and singing has had its place during midsummer. When the weather is warm and you can dance until the middle of the night without even needing any additional lights, the folk dancer of Sweden has a good opportunity to take out the very best and most beautiful and colorful folk costumes of Sweden and dance polska and a lot of other traditional Swedish folk dances. And this is sometimes done around the Midsummer Pole and sometimes just next to it. The name Maypole, or Majestong as we say in Sweden, has um, probably not so much to do with the month of May, but instead comes from the word Maya, which means to cover things in leaves, like nature does in May. A common modern myth is that this is a symbol of a huge penis that is driven down into the earth to fertilize it. This because it has two rings and a long pole which, uh, yeah, it does look like a penis drawn by a five-year-old. And if you are a sexually frustrated ethnologist from the 19th century, you could of course make that connection, which they did. And that seemed to have pleased the dirty minds of the people, because this myth is hard to erase from people's minds, regardless of if it's true or not. 
You see, this version of a midsummer pole is not the only way it can look. The earliest picture we have of it looks like this, with a lot of circles around it not hanging down. And still today it looks a bit different in different areas. It can look like this, with the ring around the pole, or like this with several rings, or like this with squares. It does have some kind of connection to fertility, I give you that, because it is a tradition to not take down that pole until it's time to cover it in new leaves and flowers the next year. If you take it down during the year, it is said that it will bring bad luck on your farm and crops. So you can still argue that this is a pole and thus it can represent a penis and it is driven into the earth to fertilize it. If this is so from the beginning, I don't know, but most people that have done serious research around the midsummer pole say it is not a penis, it is just a pole. And from the beginning it wasn't even driven down into the earth like we do today. It was a pole that young men and women carried around while they visited the area's farms and houses to beg for booze and food. A tradition we seem to have had during a lot of the yearly feasts. I guess the opportunity to get free booze is not something a Swede would back down on. The connection to a phallus symbol is not mentioned anywhere until the 19th century. And that's during the era when those sexually frustrated men decided to put sex cults into everything they could find and that they could not explain in any other way. This is not me being sassy. Okay, a bit sassy. But this is actually something that has been strongly questioned and reacted by modern researchers. It is clear that a lot of the theories that was made during the 19th century that this and that had to be an old ancient fertility cult and pre-Christian is not something we agreed with today. The 19th century researchers did a huge job with collecting and describing our traditions and folklore during the 19th century. And we should not talk down on that. But they were very colored by the nationalistic streams that flowed back then. It was in fashion to re reject anything that could come from the Christian church and to connect everything with the Vikings. Vikings was high fashion during the romantic nationalistic era that was during the 19th century and early 20th century. These fashions comes and goes, and even if today's serious researchers don't do this, I have seen a lot of those, this must be Viking because I want it to be online during the latest years. So the Viking area is back in fashion again. But I already did a rant about that, so let's continue with what we actually know and don't know about the Midsummer and Midsummer Pole. Most researchers today seem to agree that this tradition of leaving it up for the whole year was more something created by the farmers that took all kinds of tricks and magic spells to try and make the crops grow, and thus it has nothing to do with any ancient fertility cults. It's just one of those things that somewhere started and became a tradition. When this started, we don't know. Could it have started pre-Christian era? Maybe, but probably not up here in Scandinavia. The tradition of using flowered and leaved poles is not something we only see up here in the north, and it does seem to have a long tradition in the whole of the Indo-European tradition. According to both the article at the Nudic Museum and some other articles on the subject, the Midsummer Pole came to Sweden from Germany during the medieval times. Always these Germans! But seriously, this is not so surprising since during a lot of time in history both German nobility and the Hanseatic League was a strong influence in Sweden. The Germans was the top dogs and had such strong influence of our country from medieval age up to modern days that we in periods of times were more or less, well, Germans. But even if we get it from the Germans, what does this poll have to do with John the Baptist? Absolutely nothing after what I have been able to research. This seems to be something that people just have done and kept on doing and why is since long forgotten in history. What is also something that has nothing to do with the Christian church and then might have an old tradition is the folklore and folk magic that is attached to this night. As mentioned earlier, this night, just like all nights leading up to some big yearly celebration like Yule or Easter, was a night with danger and magic. Midsummer was particularly good for using magic to see into the future, and the rituals were many. 
In some rituals, you are supposed to go three times backward around the churchyard. And this was very dangerous because the glue so a ghostly pig, according to the folklore, could lurk and try and rip you in two parts if you tried this. Another tradition, one that I know some girls still do today, even if it might be said to be done as a joke, that tradition is that you need to climb over seven fences and pick seven flowers of seven different kinds and then make a wreath of those flowers and keep it under your pillow while sleeping. If you manage to do this without uttering a word and keep completely silent, then during the midsummer's night you will dream of who you are supposed to marry. One that I don't think anyone does anymore is that you could also make an extremely salty porridge and eat it before going to bed. And then your love would show up in your dreams during the night and offer you a glass of water. Another thing I don't think we still do, but perhaps we should because it do sound very refreshing, is to get completely naked and roll around in Midsummer's Day's first dew. This was considered to be something that kept you healthy and kept sickness away. For those that was a bit more shy, they could just leave out their underwear and linen shifts in the dew and let it get soaked. You then could put it on and get clean that way. Midsummer comes with a lot of these magic spells and rituals. And anyone who has been up here in Sweden during a warm and light summer night can easily understand how you can attach magic to these nights. A word of warning though. Look out for white ghostly pigs that want to rip you in two and cover yourself in mosquito repellent. Because if there is one thing that can ruin your midsummer, it's those pesky little blood-sucking insects. And of those, we have plenty. I wish you a happy midsummer and hope you will have a fantastic weekend regardless of where in the world you are. Thank you so much for listening and until next time, stay safe, keep your loved ones and the mosquito repellent close. Have a very happy midsummer.